Well, hey guys, back on this Class A amplifier kit. Wanted to see if I can fix the problem or even if there is a problem with this amplifier kit. Well, as you remember in the last video, it was doing pretty darn good until we got into measuring the distortion at higher frequencies and it was looking pretty awful, starting around 12 kilohertz. So what is the problem with this thing? Well, first, I had to um, re reverse engineer and come up with a schematic of this amplifier, and that's what I have here. You know, this is a double-sided board with white solder mask. Traces running underneath components, so it's very difficult to reverse engineer this thing, but I think I got it here pretty well. So then I went online and looked up John Lindsley Hood's original 1969 design. And it is pretty much a match. I mean, this board has a few extra things. It has a little indicator LED and adjustments for voltage and current. Transistor types are different. But the design of the amp is pretty much the same. So... That begs the question, why is this amplifier distorting at higher frequencies? So what I'm doing is hooking up the FuelTech signal generator. And I have the output load connected. And of course the scope across that load. And I'm going to use square waves. Square waves are a great diagnostic tool when you're building a linear circuit. Or such as an amplifier. You can inject square waves and analyze those and at some point I might really should do a video on how square waves are so important in uh, telling you about how your circuit performs so I will use square waves and my battery light is blinking on the camera here I gotta change that by the way that when I said battery in the other video that was kind of a joke People actually thought that was serious and looked it up. <laughs> no, it was just a joke. Be right back. Okay, we have the signal on the scope. And I'm um, set up so we're definitely not clipping. You don't want to be clipping and kind of skew your results. And you can see already there's a problem here. On the rise, it's pretty slow. And it doesn't really matter the frequency 11 kilohertz and we reach 20 kilohertz that's probably why it wasn't losing amplitude because we still have full amplitude there 10.2 volts peak to peak but as we get higher you know we're starting to cut into that curve now and the amplitude is dropping let me turn that back down. See right there we're running at uh, 15 kilohertz. And you can see, what are we, uh, 10 microseconds per di division here. And as this curve comes up, and you know, we have about 10 volts peak to peak from the lowest level to the highest. And 20 microseconds of delay here. That's kind of slow for an audio amplifier. So on the fall time, not really much of an issue. It's pretty quick. So we have a rise time slew rate issue with this amplifier. So now we need to see what the problem is. Well, for one thing, the amplifier is designed to run at a higher voltage than what the eBay listing for this thing showed. It's at something about 12 to 24 volts. We tested it at 18 volts. Looking at the John Lindsley Hood um, Wireless World article, I think it was, for 8 ohm lows, they're showing uh, 27 volts and running it at about 1.25 amps. So I reset the uh, current and voltage, but, you know, it, really the same it's not helping here back at 18 volts 1.2 amps which I calculated for 8 ohm load now let's see what happens when we connect 4 ohm loads across it I think it's really bad 
Now I have to remember that it's not set up for 4 ohm loads. You have to have more current if you're going to run this thing at 4 ohm loads. So let me do that. Now running at 2.33 amps at 4 ohm loads and it's really not that good either. But if I take off the 4 ohm load it's it is much better at 8 ohm loads but still not that great. Another thing I want to take a look at is reducing the value of this resistor here. These two transistors form a Darlington pair and normally you see a resistor connected from the base of the second transistor down to the emitter which helps speed up the Darlington pair. Normally this value is a much lower uh, resistance such as 220 ohms. This is an order of magnitude higher. So what would happen if I jumpered a 220 ohm resistor across this? But you know you have to think about the way the circuit was designed. It, des it was designed and it worked with a 2.2k resistor. So you know that's probably not our solution. Throwing in components willy-nilly can have negative effects. You fix one thing, you break another thing. You know, we might fix that slew rate issue, but we might add more distortion to the circuit at, you know, lower frequencies where the circuit was working fine. So as you can see, as I put the 220 ohm resistor across and remove it, it does speed it up quite a bit. Still not that great though, but it does help significantly. It might help us out getting low distortion at 12 kilohertz. I know it will, but you know, it's still not that great. So what else can we look at? Well, another thing is I was sent these transistors along with the kit to use them as a substitute. I would assume Matthew can only tell me that. He was the guy who sent the kit to me. And I popped them in there. But just throwing transistors in willy-nilly can be a problem as well. Although these would have more gain and they're supposed to be decent audio transistors, the problem is larger power transistors with a larger silicon die, they can have more issues with parasitics such as capacitance which works to slow them down. So what I want to try is removing these and putting in the transistors that came with it. I do think these are suspect for being fakes but you know I really don't have much of an option here. Pop those transistors in and see how it performs. You know if you put in a larger transistor the driver circuit has to be up to the task to drive that thing at high frequencies with enough current so the transistors don't have distortion. Let's see what happens. Okay, I have replaced these transistors with the ones that came with the kit. I really doubt the authenticity of these transistors, but we'll see how they work. Well, well, well. Look at our rise time now. It's very fast. Our fall time might have taken a bit of a hit, but it's probably fast enough. Our fall time is about uh, 5 microseconds. Our rise time is probably, probably like 2 microseconds. So that did fix that. However, we have a new problem here. Look at that. Let me stretch out the... It's damped, but we have a nice ring going on there. Not much going on on the bottom, but on the top we have a nice ringing going on. I could try a Bouchereau cell. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Somebody mentioned that to me, so I think that's correct. Which consists of a small value resistor like somewhere 10 ohms or less and a film capacitor maybe anywhere from 100 nano to about 500 nano and 
see if that damps it down. But to cut to the chase, I did try that already and it did not help. Now we can attack this problem from different angles. There's different ways of correcting this problem. We can look at Miller compensation. Uh, this amplifier is not really, you know, completely oscillating. It's just kind of a ring. So I think adding a capacitor across the feedback resistor would help. And I picked out a value here. You know, I tried a few things. So let's see what happens. So I place this capacitor across R7. And it's not completely clear of the ringing, but it's much better. What I've done is placed this 500 picofarad across R5 so that they're in parallel. And this is a feedback circuit. It allows more negative feedback in the higher frequencies. And, you know, this is a quick fix. You would have to totally characterize and analyze the circuit to fix that problem. Probably would try better transistors first off. And if it was still ringing, it would take a lot of analysis to uh, correct the problem. It's not so cut and dry with these things. Okay, I tacked the capacitor 500 pico across to R5. And now it's perfectly clean for some reason. I don't know, just holding that on there might not have been good enough connection or something, but... Now there's no ringing at all. Now, maybe a little bit aggressive. It's rounding it a little bit. I could try a 330 Pico, but I don't really have one on hand. Probably could come up with one laying around somewhere. But yeah, what I'm going to do now is just run the test again, the frequency sweep, and check the distortion. Okay, running the frequency sweep again with the spectrum analyzer check for roll off and distortion five kilohertz nothing that really stands out from the noise okay we're at 13 where the distortion started last time and there's no distortion and the uh, output is staying pretty flat and it recycled this thing is working perfect now you did see the little jitter at 19 kilohertz that's from the music player it kinda does that near the end of the frequency sweep but this amplifier is now working great. Okay, so we got the little amplifier kit working just fine now. We got rid of that distortion. I thought maybe I had too high a value here, but it did not hurt the frequency response. Ran flat all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And we got rid of that distortion. Looks like those other transistors did not work well in the circuit that was the main problem with the slew rate and of course putting these in then we got the ringing so we had to get rid of that so if you want to buy this kit a couple things i would do is i would get rid of these silicon rubber whatever they're made of type washers and replace them with mica you know grease them up on both sides they will dissipate heat better then you can run this at a higher voltage, maybe like uh, 24 to 28 volts, get more power out of it. Of course, you want to make sure you use a very large heat sink because it's class A. And if you are having problems with ringing and such, distortion, you could uh, try what I did here with the capacitor. So that will wrap this one up. Thanks for watching.